Yeah. We're doing this. <laughs> All right, God be praised. Let's see if I could see anybody this morning. <laughs> oh, you see me already? All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> okay, okay, God be praised. Okay, yeah. Uh, let me just uh, tag. Uh, hold on. Yeah. Oh, it does not. It does not. It does not. <laughs> it does not, Bishop. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yes, well. <laughs> does not quit i tell you well good morning good morning good afternoon good night good good tomorrow whatever time and space you are to god be the glory blessings greetings shalom peace be unto you and so lor radio youtube fam facebook fam come on join me let's tune in and let's share amen Lust just doesn't quit is this morning's title. Lust just does not quit. All right. Now, we know that the Bible tells us in the book of Revelation that we're blessed reading God's word. We're blessed hearing God's word being read. And when we apply his word to our lives, oh, how successful we are. Hallelujah. That's true success, by the way. Glory to God. So. I'm going to read 1 John 2, 15 through 17. And it reads thus, Do not love this world, nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. You know, this, this is a very deep statement. <laughs> so we have to think about it seriously, Bishop. How many of us have the love of God in us? How many of us have the love of the Father in us? Because you think about it, right? For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but from this world. And this world is fading away along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. And so we know it's talking about the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And, you know, many, many, many times, I mean, but that first part, though, Bishop, that kind of gets me. Like, we do not have the love of the Father in us. Like, are we seriously thinking about this? We live our lives so wishy-washy that, oh, my goodness. And then we wonder why, right? Most of us tend to give in to our lust, whether it's the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, or the pride of life. How many of us can attest to that? We want what we want, when we want it, how we want it, right? And there are many who don't care who gets hurt in the process, right? Or how they get what they get. And that's the truth. I mean, come on, you think about it. We see something, we want that right? They're foodies. You see something like me, I'll see a snack and be like, ooh, I got to go find that. You know, I've driven to New Jersey for snacks. <laughs> Bishop, let's be honest here. <laughs> we do not understand how we're much we're driven by what we see, huh? The, the, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. We were like, the heart wants what the heart wants, right? People are in marriages. They look at some guy or some girl. What? He's a cool, long drink of whatever. Oh, she is a snack. And then some. The Bible tells us. 
G no, Jesus says, it came from the Bible, however, Jesus did say this, that when we lust in our heart, we're committing adultery if we're married. Like, what? <laughs> That's what I said. I said it came straight out of his mouth. <laughs> straight from the mouth of Jesus. He said that. Yes, he did. Lust it already committed adultery. Whether it's a male or a female, already committed adultery. Okay. And so we we, we look at food and you know. And for some people, sometimes they've eaten already, their belly full, but they keep eating. You know, I was talking to someone and I was telling them how I went to this wedding and uh, my friend had gotten married. Uh, they don't drink, just like, oh, you know, I didn't do a bar. She didn't do a bar. However, she did a, um, a, 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 a snack, a snack, it was called a snack bar. So it was all pastries, like different pastries, like just all a variety of pastries. Sitting at the table, I was sitting, Bishop, and I tell you, <laughs> I can't forget this lady, you know. This lady said she was a diabetic. This lady took every pastry. And I was like, okay, I can understand you've never seen the, take the pastry home, Okay. So you can eat one at a time. Now she was eating this and she was eating that. Plus she had already eaten some stuff. She drank some cocktail, some, not, not cocktail, some juice that they had because they didn't have any alcohol. But she drank the juice. You know, there was like orange juice. There were different juices because as I said, they didn't have do alcohol. And uh, I forgot the one she took. Now, this lady said, Bishop, she was seeing doubles, all kind of things was happening. She's like, I'm just going to take my pillow and keep. <laughs> now, this is lust of the eyes and lust of the flesh. Come on. We've got to know when to stop. We've truly, truly got to know. And I kept telling her. And, you know, she was talking to a gentleman at the table. So I was like, well, you know him? He should drive you back to Brooklyn because by the end of the wedding, she said she wasn't feeling well. So I'm like, how are you driving back? I was thinking, leave the car, get home, and come back. I don't know. I was just like, I don't know. Maybe somebody could drive her back. So she, But Bishop, we've got to learn that the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life gets us into trouble. Do we see this? Do we not see this happening in our times? We just need to look on social media, look on the news. We've seen politicians, pastors, rabbis, law enforcement officers. We've, we've seen judges. We've seen everybody fall simply because of the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Lust gets us into trouble. It gets us into trouble. You know, uh, an English philosopher who he was born in the 15, late 1500s and he lived to the 69. He was like 91 years old. He observed and stated this. Human nature is essentially cruel and selfish. By nature, Bishop. He said, we're cruel and we're selfish. All right. Some folks are going, what does he know? Okay. So let me just finish what he said. And the only way to subdue hum humanity's evil impulses is through power. Now, let me ask you something. Can evil subdue evil? No, it cannot. I'm not even going to wait because I know maybe there are millennials out there who don't understand the concept that evil does not subdue evil. But let me tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says we overcome evil with good. Okay. So we're going to need some good in order to subdue the evil. Okay. In order, we, we cannot, we cannot
quit the lust unless we give it to God, unless we give it over to Jesus. There's a little song I love that says, give up and let Jesus take over. The thing is, we like to feel in control. And I, I, I use the word feel because we're truly not in control until we give it over to the Lord. That's the only time we're truly in control. You see, feelings will destroy us when we get carried away. You know, the Bible says we ought not to get carried away by our feelings. Because we'll feel, think about it, God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. By how many days have you gotten up and said, uh, where's God? I don't feel like he's around here anywhere near me today. How many times have you gotten up and said that? Now, is that statement true? No, it's not. Your feelings have lied to you because God doesn't lie. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He said, you'll make your bed in hell. I'm there. You went into the club. You went over. You, you went sneaking or smooching or whatever the terminologies are being used today. Huh? Whatever you've done right there, right there, <laughs> right there. Okay, right there. The word of God is what the word of God says. Doesn't fail, doesn't falter. Our feelings will betray us, sons and daughters of God. How many times you're happy and you're so happy you start crying? Like we could cry for different emotions. Yet, majority of times the world will see you cry and believe that you're struggling, believe that you're suffering, believe that you're in pain. Is that not true, Bishop? You see a person crying, you're not going to think this person is happy. It could be tears of joy, though. Do you see what I'm saying? How the emotions, say, we can't really go by that. <laughs> we can't. We can't. And so, let me tell you what the prophet, so I told you what the English philosopher Tom Hobbes, Thomas Hobbes said. But hear what the prophet Jeremiah who came way before him said. Now, he recorded what God himself said. He, God says, the human heart is the most deceitful of all things. What is deceitful? The heart or the mind, however you want to, yeah? And and desperately wicked. So what Thomas Hobbes observed was what God said eons before. Who really knows how bad it is, God asks. And then he says, but I, the Lord, search all hearts and examine secret motives. I give all people their due, what reward, according to what their actions deserve. That is Jeremiah 17 verses 9 and 10. And now hear what James, Jesus' brother by his mother said. Because you know Jesus had siblings, right? He had biological siblings. His mother had other children after she gave birth to Jesus. Only their father wasn't the same father. But they were his siblings nonetheless. So here's what James said in the book of James 3 and 16. For wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition. Jealousy and selfish, notice self, selfish ambition. There will, there, get this, you will find disorder and evil of every kind. If you are married and you have selfish ambition, there is all kind of evil in your home. Bible. Did the Bible just read say that, Bishop? Bible. So if you're in a marriage where you're selfish, you're, you're arguing, oh, I read this scripture that talked about Bishop Strife. Ooh, ooh, I can't even, I have to go get it. I have to go back over it. I wrote it down someplace. Oh, listen, sons and daughters of God, rebuke these spirits out your house, huh? 
they're very dangerous. Not just to you, not just to your spouse. If you have children in your home, to your children. Whether they're your children or your grandchildren, very dangerous. Bishop, you know, I, I remember you always used to say this. You wish you could cut people's head open and put the word of God in them. <laughs> trust. Trust that I understand what you mean because when I see humanity and our failings and to know it is happening simply because we disobey God. Because if, when we follow God's words, his words cannot lie. The word of God can do nothing except bring the success that God commands it to. So when we're not seeing these things in our lives, we have to, and a lot of times, you see, we like to play the blame game. Go back to the Garden of Eden and see. When God came down and spoke to them, the woman you gave me. It was the serpent. And the finger kept pointing. Huh? But God. So you see. It's, 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 it behooves us. To give our lust. To the Lord. Because here's the scripture. Where I got the title from. Hell has a voracious appetite. You see, we go about our lives thinking that hell is not trying to swallow and eat each and every one of us up. But that's what it's there do, trying to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. And lust just never quits. Because we're always going to see something. Our flesh is always going to act up. And we'll, don't talk about pride because we brush off our shoulder and I, I have done this and I have done that. And I've even heard testimonies in church and I'm waiting to hear the person say, you know what? I thank God because he worked this out for me. No, mm -mm. I did and I did and I did. And how is that a testimony to God? How is it? We have to be careful. The lust of the flesh. We're not. Think about it. We've got Jesus on our side. We've got the spirit of God within us. There's a reason why Jesus put the spirit of God within us. Because he know on our own we can never. We can never. We can never. Because it's always going to be. You know, is it was it King David Bishop or who said that he he guards his eyes and was was it David <laughs> Job? Thank you, Job. Yes, <laughs> I was going to say that had to be after David. Yes, thank you for the reminder. It was Job. We have to watch sons and daughters of God. The things that we watch, the things we listen to. We have to pay keen attention. Keen attention. Because it influences us. You know, there was a show on television called Snapped. And I remember once, someone that I know and love dearly, said they were watching, they were binge watching the Snap. And guess what happened? Sons and daughters of God. They felt like they were going to snap. Do you ever notice on television, when someone commits mass murder, what do they tell you about that person? They said they spent weeks studying what? Other murderers, other tactics. Be careful what you watch and what you listen to. As children of God, God is warning us, you're not greater than what God's word says. We, we tend to, you know, a lot of times, uh, uh, like Bishop, you don't know, especially these few days when I was just, uh, I was like, man, how foolish are we? <laughs> I 
I'm telling you. By the way, that was Proverbs 27 and 20. So, listen. I'm going to talk about the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. I'm going to share some folks from the Bible with us. So you know, there's basis. It comes from the Word of God. I, I talked about Eve. So we can go back there to the Garden of Eden. She was deceived into craving what the enemy of her soul wanted her to see. How different are you? Listen, it says Genesis 3 and 6. And when, now you, just read Genesis 3, okay, from the beginning. But I'm, 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 I'm stressing verse 6. And when, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and when she saw, she was in the garden with the tree all along. The serpent came and, and said, hey, <laughs> and now she's going to see that it's good for food. And that it was pleasant, what, to the eyes. Now she's having the lust of the eyes. And the tree to be desired to make one wise. She's having all kinds of lust here. Okay. Pride of life too. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave to her husband and he did eat. Let me ask you a question. Was that tree not beautiful before the enemy of her soul said, hey, Eve, <laughs> that's a beautiful tree over there. Huh? Let me ask you this question. Have you ever worked with someone or gone to church with someone? You see them every Sabbath, every Sunday, every day of the week, Monday through Friday. Nothing. And suddenly they start dating someone or they get engaged to someone. Suddenly, ooh, oh. Oh, this person is sexy. Now you start desiring them. You're married and now you start lusting after them. Or maybe you are the person, right? And the moment you get engaged, they start coming out the woodwork at you. The moment you start, you belong to somebody else. They come out at the woodwork at you. I, I'm sure we can all attest to that, right? Listen. That's the enemy of your soul at work. You've got to see the bigger picture. He wants to use your lust to destroy you. That's all he wants to do. He, that's all he's doing. Using our own lust to destroy us. See why you have to give it to the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, our Redeemer. You see, Adam and Eve's consequences affected all humanity it just didn't affect them they just didn't get thrown out of the garden of eden they just didn't lose life now let me read genesis 3 16 through 19 and hear what the consequences were huh unto the woman he said that's god i will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception so many you know so many people ask why oh why listen and and who bishop now let's let's get real here folks start blaming god is why do god allow children to be sick why do god allow children to have cancer there's saint jude's hospital every time i see the commercial um you know i pray seriously because it is so difficult these are babies some of them right is it God's fault? No. Hear what happened. God said the day you eat that fruit, what's going to happen? What's, we're going to die. Didn't the Bible, God warned. He warned them. Well, he warned Adam. Because the Bible, God said Adam was the one who sinned, right? God warned Adam so he should have warned his wife. So if you want somebody to blame, know where it goes but let me continue reading so it's talking about conception just even in the act of having sex with your spouse huh in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children and thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee 
And unto Adam, so remember, Adam was not ruling over Eve in the Garden of Eden. Oh, that's a message for another day. I, I, I brought that somewhere else. I didn't bring that to you guys, but I brought this somewhere else before. But anyway, or maybe I did, I don't know. And unto, I've done so many messages, right? <laughs> and unto Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee. So God is like, I told you not to eat it. How many times God has told you personally, you don't do that. You don't go there. You don't say that. But you get, you did, you went, and you said. He holds you accountable. It's time for us to break up our follow ground. Because do you see the fire in Maui? Did you see the flood, uh, uh, the earthquake in, in uh, 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 Morocco, and the flood in Libya? Thousands of bodies are being buried. What happened in Brazil? All over the world. Okay. All right. So. And God's continue reading. I commanded thee saying. Thou shalt not eat of it. Curse is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it. All the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles. Shall it bring forth to thee. And thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for thus thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Now you see what happened? Sin occurred. Sin. Everything we see happening today, sin. So listen, if you're stung by a bee, because remember, in the Garden of Eden, the relationship with the animals, the creeping things and everything, we had dominion over everything, over the fish in the sea, the birds of the air. Read the Bible. It's there. Go back to the book of Genesis. Go back to the beginning. You know what? When you see things happening, go back to the beginning. Because when you put things in its contextual order, you'll realize why things are happening, why they're happening. So if you're stung by a bee, you can blame Adam and Eve, right? You feel pain, blame them. You feel sick, blame them. You have no money, blame them. You get the picture, right? But wait a minute. Your disobedience, my disobedience, huh? adversely affects others as well so while we look at the progenitors adam and eve what part do we play and how can we because the bible says if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves now huh? seek god turn repent then right we pray we turn we repent what the God says. He will heal the land. Sons and daughters of God, listen. The Bible says, For we know that all creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. The earth groans under our sins, your sins, my sins, and everybody else before us. So, when we're looking for someone to blame, we just need to look at self. But of course, none of us want to look at ourselves and say, you know what? I'm responsible for what I'm going through. Nope. We have to blame Tom, Dick, Ari, the devil, and, and everybody else. And we, oh, we're innocent. You know, little kids, nope, didn't do it. Not me. How can you beat me? I didn't do it really it's time for us to take responsibility and we take that responsibility by going to god humbling ourselves turning from our wicked ways we can only overcome evil sons and daughters of god with good we can only 
The lust is not never going to stop. Bible says it's not going to quit. So the only way to subdue it is to give it to Jesus. Cast, that, cast it upon the Lord. Come on. We've got to cast it on the Lord. Now let's talk about the lust of the flesh. And, and like I said, the pickings are many. <laughs> ah, it's so many. Honestly, like whoom, a whole bunch came at the same time. But but I, I I did three. You can pick your own. You read the Bible. Pick whichever you choose. But here are some. Samson. How about Samson? He couldn't resist Delilah, even though he shouldn't partake of anything that was from the vine. Did you know that? The angel told his parents, I have nothing. The mother, they couldn't have anything. And while she was pregnant, she shouldn't have anything. And when he was born, he shouldn't have anything. But get this. He wanted Delilah, who was from the Valley of Sarek. Do you know what Sarek means? Choice vine. She was off the vine. So when he partook of it, he gave in to the lust of his flesh and end up losing his eyes, sons and daughters of God. Eventually, he got a second chance because that's his name. Eventually, he got a second chance and he became, when he put his purpose over lust, he ended up fulfilling his purpose. Lust is life and it didn't have to go that way. Think about it. It didn't have to go that way. So, young men and women, listen. God promises to give you the desires of your heart. You just need to turn all your plans over to him and trust him to guide you. A matter of fact, this is not just for young people. This is for all of us. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. I have to not lean to my own understanding. Boy, I tell you, if I lean to my own understanding, whoop, I'll be in trouble every day, all day. Trust. I got to acknowledge God in the things I do and the things I say. Huh? Come on. All of us. All of us. And you can read Samson's story in Judges 16 with Delilah. You could read from verse thir chapter 13, I believe up through verse 16 up to chapter 16 and also if you want to understand the the character of samson a little bit more you can get my book divine revelation eye openers right it's in there you can read that david is in there too by the way david is the second person i selected not because he was in there, but I, as I said, how could you not select David? Because <laughs> his life was on the treetops, as, 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 as you would say in Jamaica. He lived in a glass house. Why? He was the king. He lusted after one of his captain's wife, right? And he gave in and he slept with her. This led to him setting up her husband to be murdered. And because of this, his own, you know, one of his sons tried to murder him. The sword never left his house. His sons murdered other sons. And his sons were getting killed left, right, and center, right? Death followed and pursued them because, simply because he gave in to his lust, sons and daughters. You, you think it's a joke. Other people are hurt by your lust. Your lust, my lust. I can't say, oh, you know how we like to say, it's my body. Oh, I do what I want with it. Oh, I can do what I want. This is how we talk, right? Bishop, isn't this how we talk? It's, it's, my, it's my business and my body. And I do what I want and I say what I want. However, no, no. Because whatever you do and say is affecting someone else sometimes in your very own household. And how, how do you feel when you know you gave into your lust and you hurt somebody deeply or worse, cost them their life? That's a guilt you can't afford to live with, sons and daughters of God. 
we've got to stop giving in to the flesh and trust God. He does not and cannot lie. And he knows everything. Isn't it time we trust God? I, I'm sure God has proven himself in all our lives at some point, some way, shape or form that we should be able to trust him at this juncture. And so getting what you illicitly are lusting after might be sweet on your lips, but it's going to be bitter in your belly. You can read 2 Samuel 11 on through and see David's story. And see the account of what happened in David's life. What you illicitly are lusting after, huh? Might be sweet on your lips and bitter in your belly. That bitterness in your belly ain't nothing to sneeze at, sons and daughters of God. Take heed in Jesus' name. Now, one more. And these, I chose all men. But, you know, there were, <laughs> I chose all men. Solomon, because it was easy. Solomon. He was the second love child of David and Bathsheba, the woman that he, you know, killed her husband. And although he was approved by God, listen, he lost his way when he made unholy alliances with women who worship false gods and ended up losing 11 of the 12 kingdoms that God had given to him. Don't think you cannot lose things God have given to you when you turn your back on God. Not because God is punishing you, but because of what you have done the consequences you're forgiven but the consequences are there forgiveness is a gift from god through christ jesus the consequences got to think about that and you can read first kings chapter 11 just read the whole thing because then you will see for yourself and now we come to the pride of possessing pride of life pride of possessions pride of accomplishments and not saying you ought not to be proud of what you've accomplished in life however you got to think about your motives now here I chose Ananias and Sapphira. And you can read about them in Acts chapter 5, 1 through 11. You know, short, 11 verses. Listen, here's a husband and wife who died senselessly. Bishop, I don't know about you, but from the first time I heard the story of Ananias and Sapphira, I was like, what a mess. How senseless the death was that? How senseless a death was that, sons and daughters of God? Listen to me. If your spouse, your auntie, your daddy, your uncle, a lot of times, children, parents, spouses, compromise God. You know it's illegal what your family member is doing. You know it's immoral, but you're helping them. And how is that fearing? You don't understand the spiritual ramification that will follow through in your lineage. Sons and daughters of God, don't play with God. Don't play with your own life. Matter of fact, none of us can play with God. Stop playing with yourself. Stop being deceived by the enemy of your soul. Stop playing with your life. Because that's all. That's all we're playing with. Bishop, I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, let me just bring Jesus' message. Yeah, I don't know. Let me just bring your message, Lord. So, as I said, they died senselessly. And here's why they died. They saw that people were selling their properties, right? And bringing the monies 
to the church to help the poor, to help the needy, to help the widows, right? Those who were in great need, those who didn't have. And they were being helped. Bible, the, the apostles, they weren't taking anything. They weren't siphoning anything. They weren't putting things to the side. They were, the, the people said they could, the Bible, Bible said that they could see the people being helped, right? Thing is, the people who were selling their properties or their houses or their houses and their property, whatever they were selling, they were doing it from their heart. That's one. And they were getting praised for doing it. Now, Ananias and Sapphira, here comes. They wanted the pride of possessing. They just didn't want to share all of it. Now, it wasn't that. And the Bible specifically states that. They could have kept their property. They didn't have to sell it. That's one. Nobody was forcing them. When they sold it, they could have kept some of the money. Because all the monies was theirs. What it was, was that they lied. That the portion they gave was all of the money. You see, their motives were wrong to begin with. And so we have to be careful in the pride of possessing. You see, remember Jeremiah 17 and 10, which I read to you earlier. Good morning, Wendy. <laughs> oh, I just saw one person. Good morning. Oh, I didn't see her. Hey, Ija, how are you? I didn't see nobody. Bishop, I could take a picture. Wendy is the first person I see pop up on here. <clears throat> so, okay. So, Jeremiah 17 and 10 says, But I, the Lord, search all hearts. So, whenever we're doing anything, we have to know that God knows our hearts. He knows our motives. And it says he examines our secret motives. What's secret to another person is not secret to God. You know God knows, right? His Holy Spirit already knows. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit already knows. So why hide it? Who are you hiding it from? Seriously. And so he says, I give all people their due rewards according to their actions deserve. Word of God. Bible, right? So, it is not that we cannot seek to achieve in life, and we should. It is the means by which we do it and the motives. Our motives, if our means and our motives are not morally upright before God, then we can expect anything to happen. And don't blame God. It's not his fault. Not at all. Instead, we ought to be grateful and thankful to God. Because the Bible tells us in Hebrews that Jesus still intercedes for us. And so we should really thank God for Jesus. And thank God that God loves his son and loves us so much. That when his son says, hold on. Who remembers? There's a scripture in the Bible, right, Bishop? When, when it talks about pruning the tree, cutting down the tree. And so the, 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 the planter, the, 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 the tiller of the ground, the, the, uh, what, what was he called, Bishop? The, 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 the man who was uh, protecting or taking care of, of the, the vineyard said, no, do not cut it, do not pluck it up, do not chop it down. Let me let me prune it. Let me let me work with it. Well, Jesus is interceding for each and every one of us. And so we ought to be grateful every day of our lives. Every single day. We we go through life and we, we we there are times we don't want to give praise and thanks to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We just want to complain about everything. The sun is it's, it's the sun is shining too bright. It's raining too much. It's it's dark outside. It's cloudy. My toe hurts. I'm not saying it's not legitimate. Come on. But give God thanks that the sun did come out. And that even though the, your toe hurts, it's nothing worse. Glory to God. We've got to be grateful and thankful to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so, you see, 
God wants us to live well and prosper. You see, God is not an evil God. He's not an angry God. Our sins were punished in the body of his son. You know that, right? The Bible said it is the loving kindness of God that draws us to him. Come on, let's let's put God in his... Listen, God is God regardless of what is happening. So let's tell the truth about God. And not fall for the lies. Read the word of God. Stay in the word. Because it is the word of God that is going to lift us up out of the miry pits. It is the word of God that is going to help us with our lust that will not quit. Oh, you know, when we hear pastors in the pulpit say, oh, I struggle with lust or I struggle with this. You know, people are like, oh, but, but, but that's a man or a woman of God or whatever, you know, whoever, right? Or it's the Bible said, the word of God said that the lust never quits. We have to all give it over to Jesus. If we don't, if you and I don't give our lust over to the Lord, trust, we're in trouble. We've got to give them to the Lord. So, God, listen to what God says in, 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 in the, the word of God says in Psalm 37, verses 1 through 7. Don't follow after wicked ones or be jealous of their wealth. Don't think for a moment they're better off than you. They and their short-lived success will sh soon shrivel up and fade away like gra grass clippings in the hot sun. You ever see grass clippings in a hot sun? The, the guy mows the lawn and it smells so good. I love to smell freshly cut grass. When the sun is out, you just look back. Just, just go back and look. It starts shriveling up. And the Bible tells us this is how their, their short-lived success will be. Instead, the word of God says, keep trusting in the Lord and do what is right in his eyes. We ought to be pleasers of God and not pleasers of men. Hallelujah, glory to God. Fix your heart on the promises of God and you will dwell in the land feasting on his faithfulness. Come on, sons and daughters of God. Find your delight and true pleasure in Yahweh and he will give you what you desire the most. The Bible says he gives us the desires of our hearts. But wait a minute. What's in our hearts? What's truly in our hearts? Come on. And so, give God the right to direct your life. And as you trust him along the way, you'll find he pulled it off perfectly. He will appear as your righteousness, as sure as the dawning of a new day. He will manifest as your justice, as sure and as strong as the noonday sun. Quiet your heart in his presence and wait patiently for Yahweh. And don't think for a moment that the wicked in their prosperity are better off than you. God is faithful. God is just. He's true. Trust him. Listen, you and I, we've been redeemed by Christ Jesus, who shed his precious blood at the cross of Calvary so that you and I can live redeemed. So live redeemed. We are a peculiar people of noble rebirth. See, our, our nobility is a rebirth. Huh? We were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. But then we were reborn into nobility. Hallelujah, glory to God. So let's live as the royals that we are. Trusting our creator and our redeeming king of all kings. And our heavenly Abba. It's time we start living. As. The redeemed. That we are. As the royals. That we are. As the nobility. That we are. Because that's who we are. We've been reborn. Let us trust God. By turning over our fleshly lust. To Jesus. Because they won't quit on their own. And hell is very greedy. Hell is waiting to swallow everybody up. 
So listen, give avarice or extreme greed, give gluttony, give pride, give wrath or anger, give envy, give laziness or strong sexual desires, give them all to Jesus. Give it all, give it all to Jesus because only he can truly tame. You know, the Bible says the tongue no man can tame, only Jesus. <laughs> you think you're any match for your lust? You're not. You're not. Cold showers, crying, whatever, whatever. Give it all to Jesus. That's the only way. I'm telling you. I can attest. The only way. Trust, trust God. You see, we have read of the consequences others have reaped. And we're also seeing it, as I said before. We're also seeing it on social media, in the news. We see it everywhere. There are consequences. Isn't it time? We, we, we say we want the her earth and we're collecting the bottles and, and we're, we're doing this and we're planting trees and we're riding bicycles and we're, we're turning to electric and all good, all good, all good, yes. They're good deeds. However, do you know that at times when you try to placate, there are people who try to cover up the wrong they did by doing a good deed. Doesn't change it. He who hides the wrong he does still does the wrong thing. You know that? Tell the truth. <laughs> speak the truth and speak it ever cause it what it will. He who hides the wrong he does does the wrong thing still. That's a little idiom I learned growing up, right? It's true. When you read the word of God, you can see where it came from. The thing is, brothers and sisters, we have to turn it over to the Lord. Just give it to Jesus. Give it all to him. Because only he can help us with our lusts. They're too much for us. You saw what happened in the Garden of Eden. I took you back to the beginning of time. Our time. Right? And we can still see it continuing. And now we can go to the Word. But of course, it was going to take a long time too. But maybe we can do part J to see when we give it to the Lord how God takes care of it. And how we have good success then. That's the only way. By giving it to the Savior of our souls. So listen, sons and daughters of, of God. The enemy of our souls is still cunning. Still cunning. But, and I love this. The one who came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. He's all wise. He has wisdom. Hallelujah. You know that wisdom beats out cunning. Uh, come on. I don't know about you, but it's a hallelujah shout to the Lord. Praise to the Lord moment right now. He wins every time. So give your lust over to Jesus and watch what happens. I can attest. I've had to give it over to Jesus. Give up and let Jesus take over. <laughs> Because he makes the way for us. Amen. So go for it. Give your lust to the Lord. They won't quit. They won't quit. But Jesus, he can control them. He can take care of them. He can pacify them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Aren't you happy? You don't have to do a thing but give it to Jesus. I don't know about you. Pass it on to Jesus. Right? Amen. Have a blessed and a wonderful day. All right. Take care. Thanks, Bishop. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Wendy, for tuning in. And whoever else was there, I can't see anybody. Honestly, I only see Wendy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chrissy. Ija, Mija. How are you doing? Thank you. Thank you all for tuning in. And I'm going to upload to my YouTube channel. I'm Flo, F-L-O, Chang Ajita. C-H-A-N-G hyphen A-G-E-D-A. 
so you can go there and share with those who don't have who are not on facebook because it is imperative it is important see when god speaks to us when god tells us oh good morning pastor shazad i just see pastor shazad when god speaks to us when god tells us something when he warns us or speaks to us everything he does is for our good he wants us to have good success he wants us to see his goodness in the land of the living come on he's there to help us so every message we hear is a message to help us to live better lives here on earth because we're actually supposed to reign while we're here fulfilling our purposes so if that's not happening then you need to recheck okay reevaluate in the lord don't do it any other place but in jesus okay all right so have a wonderful okay go ahead bishop oh oh yes thank you uh, amen thank you bishop okay so bishop said to remind you of the books so i'm gonna do a, a video right after this so I can show you all the books that are on Amazon. A couple of them are in Barnes and Nobles, but you can get them on Amazon and you get them swiftly on Amazon, right? Um, I, there is, uh, I have Divine Revelation Eye Openers and that shares the messages, you know, it, it opens up the characters in the Bible and, and, and we just have some extra revelation from God. Uh, you know, it's so amazing the messages and the blessings and the love that God leaves for us in the pages of the, the Bible. And so that's divine revelation eye openers. Then there is divine revelation, communion mysteries reveal. And oh boy, I, I love that. It's, it's for someone who never used to take a communion. Let me tell you something, a communion meal. Ah, the, the, the miracles I have seen. Let me tell you something. You're a child of God, take communion meal. And and read that book. Good morning, Apostle. Oh, wow, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Oh, I see Apostle Ingrid on here too. Okay. And 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 said to Gabby the glory. And then the the last published one for now, the uh, the third published one, I should say, because it's not the last. Um, others are coming is uh, as for the days of trees by the way i'm gonna do you know what i'm gonna do bishop i'm gonna do a book club with that one so if you have your book i'm gonna do a zoom book club so i'll let you know when i'm starting it and i'll put the zoom link out there and we can once you get your books and you can you can messenger me and let me know you have your book and if you're interested in um joining the book club to discuss that book then you can messenger me and because um, you're on here and then um, you know or if you have my number you can always reach out to me and uh, and so uh, when the time I will let you guys know right but so those are the books and and as for the days of trees oh my the title itself is a blessing from the Word of God right Bishop straight out of Isaiah 6 yes a blessing from the Lord and in that book we discover how similar we are to trees and also some of the reasons why god compares us to trees jesus did god does and you know to god be the glory so go out and get the books and encourage someone else to 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 get the book as well because you know what god told me to write them he told me to publish them and i did i was obedient i was I was I was when I published that the la, the third one I was writing at the time you know my story <laughs> I was <laughs> but I I put that on hold for Jesus and and there are other books that I have too and that he also gave me so they're coming hallelujah glory to God anyway go for it have a blessed day bishop has two books but I don't. I think you have to call Bishop L O R Radio. You can contact him on Messenger, on YouTube, 
on LOR Radio. He's under Finding the Lost Sheep Center or Basil Anderson, and, and you can purchase his books. And, you know, you know I have advertised other people's books as well. And so I will remind you of others' books because when God blesses us with insight, it helps us to see, you know, and to understand better the Word of God, especially the books that are written based on the Bible. You know what I'm saying? It helps you to understand better the Word of God and how to, to live and how to navigate, right, in this, in this life. So, you know, go out and support those who, are, who have written books on the Word of God. And remember, Sister Danette, who I don't see on here, she has, and, and her book, if you've been abused, if you've been through any, oh my goodness, get her book, Beautifully Broken, no. What? What is the title, Bishop? Beautifully blessed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, and her in her book, it's it's not just her story of how God helped her to overcome. It's a testimony of how God helped her to overcome her uh, the abuses that she's been through in life. There are scriptures in there that she held on to that took her through. And so share that book, buy that book for someone you know going through a rough time, you know, or an abusive relationship, because I'm telling you, yes, it, that's a book to help, of course. And I'm not just saying that because she's my sister friend, she's my sister friend and I love her. I'm going to say that, of course, yes. However, the book, I am telling you, I have read the book, so I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt. And Bishop has a book there that I used as a devotional with my kids. Bishop, tell me the titles again, because I really don't. <laughs> God's Vision of Prosperity and the One with the Hammer. The Power of the Carpenter's Tool. I'm telling you, get them. You know, and I still say, I see that they should be a teaching tool. Seriously, they should use that in Bible school. But anyway, it's my opinion, my humble opinion, but it's my opinion nonetheless. <laughs> but go out and try to get these books and be blessed and know that uh, Rechanka, she has written, you know, Crossing the Jordan. I think she has another book coming out, but there, there are so many good books out there. And, you know, just, just make sure you read the word of God important more, most importantly if you don't read any other book read this one to god be the glory so go for it and have a blessed and a wonderful day know that i love you guys and god the father god the son god the holy spirit loves all of us so much more and so we're grateful let's just give a grateful uh you know father in the name of jesus right now i just want to lift up the folks in the ukraine in russia in, Mongo in Morocco, in uh, uh, Libya, on the continent of Africa, on all the continents, Lord. South American continent, North American continent, on all the continents, because there is something going on somewhere, everywhere. There are things going on. And, and then, Daddy, I, I lift up your children, because in all lives, there is something going on, whether it's a personal upheaval, whether it's sickness or, or struggles or marriage or finance or just ju ju it's judicial in nature, whatever it is, Lord, whether it's it may not be the person themselves, it could be by connection, it could be a family member, it could be a friend, Father, relationships issues lord god whatever it may be father i lift up all your children to you and i thank you that none of us are alone you're there with each and every one of us taking care of each and every one of us and so we can have confident expectation that you O oh lord are there with those who are grieving those who are sick those who are mourning those who are rejoicing those whatever it may be you are there with all of us and this we can be confident in. You never leave, nor do you forsake. And you always take care of us. You perfect the things that concern us. So I thank you. I praise you in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. All right. That being said, go for it. Have a blessed and a wonderful day. Know that may the face of God continue to shine upon each and every one of us. And you know, listen. Do you ever have one of those translucent things, Bishop? Where the, the, your pencils or something. I used to give those to my kids. You hold it up in the light. 
and you turn off the light and then it's shining that uh, that's us amen all right have a blessed and a wonderful day <laughs> thank you all for tuning in all right